All right, so I had a call, compressor four, low temp side, oil failure, lockout. So you see the, the glass is kind of low, although that level in there is sufficient for Bitzer, but if you look further in, that pot might not be completely level. It might be tilted forward a little bit. But uh, usually, it is a high pressure oil system. So it's a separator, reservoir combination. And I see that, that there, you should never really have the top ball full. But I'm working out other problems in this store as well. Sometimes it's completely empty and it's even empty out here, locking out all of the uh, medium temp side. But I know I need crankcase heaters. I have them on order. And the valves for this compressor, like I, I put my gauge on here, I pump it down and see if it holds back the discharge. It was slowly rising, and, and Bitzer's, anyone I've ever checked the valves on by pumping them down like that, I mean, they hold tight. A lot more tight than most of the Carlisle's, or any of the Carlisle's or Copeland's I've, I've checked. Maybe it's because those are a little older, I'm not sure, it could be the German engineering. But uh, yeah, these seep a little bit. I'm gonna try to replace the plates on this, so I ordered those as well. But maybe I could take a uh, picture of inside for you guys because there's they did a remodel on the medium temp side and the piping is crazy. I actually drew, drew a little diagram. Oh, another thing. <laughs> Somebody put the wrong motor in. I don't know if you can see it. But you see how low that fan blade is? And it's like, the shaft is buried inside the hub there. They're usually flush. And that fan blade is a couple inches higher. But the full load amps for 460 volts are different on this motor as well. So it could be tricking out the VFD. In the history, Focus. Now I'm gonna go to logs. Scroll down. I wanna go to DTA, dual temp A rack condenser. I want a graph. Now the Danfoss graphs are way better. I don't I don't like no bar. But that's what we got. And you can see at times the, the pressure spikes. So I gotta get that correct motor and then go through the parameters of the VFD and make sure that it has the proper uh, specs that it's reading for the four motors that are on the condenser. I also gotta order a D superheater. So you got the hot water coming in and you're getting kind of like free heat. So it kind of preheats the water and circulates it to, uh, to warm it up and then there's less load on the, uh, the gas-fired uh, heat. The gas-fired hot water heater. Sorry, I had a little brain fart. But that's valved off because it's leaking all over. And you know, that is factored in to the condensing. So it's a, it's a pretty small condenser. It's a four fan. So that could be part of the problem too. And I've made a quick diagram on the... How the hell did I draw? I drew it uh, Maybe I can go inside and look. 
But that's the island they installed. So they got the riser coming up. This is in the ceiling. And the inverted trap. From this point, it should be pitched back towards the main suction and then drop down into the top. They go through the riser, it drops down, and then back up. So if there's not enough velocity from the medium temp side, this whole section of pipe here, which is about 30 feet long, could be holding oil. So sometimes I have it run out of oil, I pump the rack down on the loops, and all of a sudden I get one ball up in the reservoir. I took pictures of the piping and I sent it to Hill Phoenix and the, uh, the tech support guy there kind of thinks the same way I do that could be an oil trap. But really what you can do is just shut the suction, allow the liquid to fill in the store. You know, you don't have to shut them for too long and then open them quick. So these have a double riser. And then sometimes you can, if you have the suction lower and you're pumping the freaking oil or the liquid into the store, you can push some of the refrigerant and the uh, oil back up to the rack. But I think somebody at one time replaced compressor one and it may have been a burnout you see this runs off a vfd i have it off right now so i mean i had i had the inlet valve off and this thing fills up with oil i checked the valves I was having to pump the oil into this compressor to lower it because even with no inlet and I even pumped it down, popped it off here to make sure this wasn't just passing even though I thought it was closed. You can kind of see a pear shape on the accumulator and I had changed the liquid dryer, I'm going to do that again today. Little, you know, back in January last year, and there was a bunch of wax inside the shell. So I'm gonna take that out today and, and see if it, it's just filled up with wax again. If that burnout was real bad, then it could have clogged the the J tube where the orifice or the screen is at the bottom of the tube for the uh, the outlet. So this will, it comes usually like that. So there's a pipe inside there and then comes up the outlet. And this, we usually have a deflector over here to, to deflect any oil or liquid refrigerant away from the inlet. It'll come down. So there's wax and shit up in there. I've had copper particles I pulled out of different cases in the screens. Clogged dryers, I've had moisture issues. So I gotta change this filter again anyway. I've been meaning to do it, but you know, we got other problem stores. So one thing at a time here. Usually I'll use like a small gauge and just connect it on there, but sometimes they get oil caught inside them and then they, they, you gotta let it drain out. They don't read properly. And I probably should get an actual fluid uh, gauge. But with the hose on it, I hate filling the hose up with oil, but you know, since you have atmosphere in here, you read the pressure, you don't pump oil into the gauge. So. And then I'll just blow liquid refrigerant through it real quick to clean it out. So where are we at here? That's like, looking like 20, 19. So you got the high pressure. Line coming out of the bottom. 
So it's at discharge pressure. You got your sight glass feeding the filter. I replaced this filter not that long ago. It's actually an old date. I've, I've done it again since then. I just I marked it up there, not here. Um, and then you have the medium temp regulator out of the filter. And then the low temp, the low temp side will have its own. And you can see the element gets its pressure. This is the low temp one, so it's getting its pressure from the low temp. And so if you got a suction pressure, speed up, just climb through here. Overview. My suction pressure is, you can't read it, but on the low temp LTA, it's the top line, it's nine pounds right now. You gotta think, when it's pumping, the crankcase is gonna be a little lower than that. So, I'm about 19. So that's 10 pound differential. That's that's good. That's not bad. I'm not gonna adjust that regulator. What I am gonna do is adjust the pop. See if I can get oil in it. I just did one turn counterclockwise on the adjustment up top. And it looks like it's got a good level now. So the 10 pound differential is plenty. You just need more pressure feeding it than you got in the crankcase. So anything above five, but I'm not gonna play with that. I got 10. I don't wanna change any of the dynamics that I have going on here, because these have been all right. Like I said, except for compressor one. But the other day I did lower this. This was this was up this was up around 40. So I turned this valve in to get that 10 pound differential. But before I did that, I had this one was filled a lot. It was like overfilling. So I had turned that screw clockwise to lower the level. But then, the next time I come here, I adjusted this, and then this wasn't holding enough oil. So I have to put the adjustment back, which I should have went to this first and checked the outlet pressure, feeding the compressor. I mean, ideally, I guess you'd want a T right here or somewhere in the main line. Uh, but this rack's just got a swivel T. I don't know if somebody added that later, but it seems to be working. So I'm gonna see how that goes for now. So I'm gonna change this liquid filter and then see where that level is when I'm done. You know, after it settles for a while and it's running. It seems like it might be getting a little low again. And that's getting a little low. Let's see where our suction pressure is now. That's fine, the suction pressure is at 4.4. And we have 10, so we're still six pounds. Above crankcase pressure. And the crankcase is gonna be a little lower than what we're reading up there. That's reading on the header back here. We'll see where it falls. I don't know if you watched my other video, but I have a video of changing the liquid pours. This rack actually has a bypass. You see this bypass here. 
and that valve's closed. So it's a lot easier. I can just open this bypass and isolate isolate the shell. And I don't have to shut everything off and be under freaking a rush because they got a high load and there's a ton of people in the store. So, all right, I'm just gonna hook this up to the low, low side or low temp suction header. Um, I could probably do it right here before the accumulator. And maybe that liquid that I'm pumping out of that shell that's trapped in here will wash that J tube out. Nah, probably not. I would have to put it in and go through the outlet. So, probably not, but that's wishful thinking. <laughs> Alright, I have my liquid. I have the high side hooked up to the dryer shell. Everything's already purged. I hook the low side up to the low temp, which is running about five pounds right now. And that should pull it down pretty quick. And I even hooked up the uh, refrigerant access part port to the uh, medium temp. But first I'm gonna do it in the low temp. So everything's already purged. Open that up. Now my tap's not at the lowest point, you know, it could still hold liquid here once the level gets down. So that's why I'm going to hook it up to the medium temp side too. And uh, once I don't see any flashing in there, open this up as well. I'll pull it down quicker. Yeah, there it's dropping. I see minimal liquid in there. You can't really see. Maybe a little bit. This light's burning up. You know, maybe one day I'll find the time to... <laughs> Take care of that. And one day I'll get a better camera. Or carry a better flashlight. I, don't know, I lost mine, I gotta get a new one. So I'm gonna pump this down. And I don't wanna make this too long. But, uh, same process, you just unbolt it, put the shelf, you know, take the shelf out of all your gaskets. I'm going to use a high water and a high acid because I believe the last vendor had a burnout on this compressor. Compressor one. And this is the combo I put in a while back. And I meant to come back and change it sooner. So in high water, because I've had issues with moisture in some of the uh, coffin cases. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Be safe.